Hey everyone, welcome to Alchemy with Zero Phase. I'm Eric, and uh, a couple things I want to get out of the way real quick first. Uh, I know some of you have been having problems getting to my Etsy store to buy my uh, Stable Diffusion prompt generator. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Etsy has a, a policy regarding using their name and anything, and I created a subdomain under my domain with the name Etsy because I wanted people to have an easier way of getting there. It's a little shorter to put in descriptions. Apparently, though, this is against their rules and so they suspended my account now I've appealed it and uh, unfortunately they're really slow they say they could take up to two weeks uh, for the response so while we're waiting for that um, I'm gonna keep going we'll just keep pushing forward with this uh, would love it if you guys joined our, our uh, discord if you want to join our discord uh, go ahead and message me uh, in the chat we'll do what we can to get you on there um, <clears throat> for those of you who did buy the, uh, the, the prompt generator, what we've done is we've created a, uh, uh, a Discord channel uh, that uh, if, if you've purchased it, we'll give you access to that, and it'll give you access to the different versions of the prompt generator, whether that's the Stable Diffusion prompt generator or the Mid Journey prompt generator. So uh, if you've purchased it, go ahead and join the Discord. I'll uh, put a link in the bottom. If you know the, those links, I got, I got to look at this and see if there's a way to. Uh, they the links expire after a certain amount of time. There's reasons for that. They don't want uh, you don't want to have a storm on your Discord channel of you know thousands of people joining or using bots to join or whatever. So there's reasons for that. So just message me, and uh, I'll get you a link for that, that that'll work and other people other people will see the link and that's fine they can join too during that time that short period of time um so yeah uh we'll, we're working on that i'm hoping they'll respond back a, a little quicker than than what uh two weeks god so frustrating building up momentum on this and only to be kind of <laughs> punched in the face because of something like this they said they sent out an email indicating that uh, uh, why I, my account was suspended, but I never got the email. I searched and searched, no email. So I sent the appeal saying, why am I suspended? And I'm supposed to get a notification about the appeal too. Never got a notification. Check my email address, everything. So I finally did some research and finally figured out the possible reason why they suspended my account because of that subdomain. So we're working on it. <clears throat> so... I know I told some of you or made indications that we were going to be doing a video on the um, regional prompter, uh, which is this right here. Now, I I actually am moving on from that because <laughs> uh, I found something better. Now, I may still do one uh, on this, uh, but honestly, uh, I watched a video on, on using <clears throat> excuse me, composable Laura and Leighton Couple. And it does all all the things that Regional Prompter does, uh, and in a very user friendly way. And so uh, I I want to go through the process of of showing you how to get that installed and um, how to use it. It's super uh, super simple and ridiculously powerful. Like it's being able to create custom regions where you can give it specific prompts and have it do various things. Some of the tests I did, being able to adjust very specific parts of your image based upon uh, uh, what you put in here in the in the latent couple is just amazing. Let me show you a couple uh, examples I just did uh, while I, you know while I was practicing with this. Let's head over to the image browser, and uh, so this is the first one I, I did where I specified like the beach the ocean I set up three different areas and then the sky and I tried saying wa uh, watercolor I think the sky kind of did that and then <clears throat> after researching this I, I figured out what was going on um, each line in the latent couple you have to put in uh, what you want to see so the style like done in watercolor I had to put on each line but let me just go through and show you this so this is the one where I fixed it um, as you can see, it does a great job of filling in each of the regions, uh, added the person down here. And then I was like, oh, I want to I wanna see something a little different. So I added another region specifying Cthulhu. Well, it didn't quite do that, so I, I had to emphasize the word a little bit. And sure enough, bam, throws in Cthulhu. Uh, I wanted to refine it a little bit. And uh, sure enough, getting Cthulhu, people on the beach like, what the hell? What's going on here? 
and uh, then refining it just a little bit more, getting, well, actually, no, I decided to change it to pirate ship. I changed it in one area, but forgot I had to redo the, uh, the, the where it, it modifies the prompt. And so it, uh, once I did that, I added the pirate ship in that I wanted, got the scene I wanted. I mean, it's just beautiful. This is going to be so amazing to be able to have this much control over this. Uh, this in, in concert, you know, as we go through this, we're going to learn to use all these tools together. Uh, and, you know, how each tool, whether it's the in-paint anything uh, tool or the, uh, um, uh, excuse me, the uh, control net extension, and then using that all in concert with each other. It's amazing. Like yesterday, my wife came to me and asked me, uh, she took a picture of my daughter <laughs> wearing a mermaid outfit and she's like can you can you put this into like an ocean scene and i'm like yeah probably so i do it you know and ended up with this very colorful ocean scene and then she's like no i want you to do it like this and she sends me the uh the i guess the poster scene of the new uh little mermaid thing is kind of dark and you know you see she's swimming towards the surface and she's like can you do it like this i'm like oh yeah, I guess I could. <laughs> so I, I took it into the uh, in-paint anything, got the mask for my daughter, and uh, then took it into, um, uh, once I got the, you know, I took it into control net and was able to use uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the um, uh, reference. <clears throat> and using the original image from the, the movie, I was able to use that as a reference and Sure enough, it it, th it creates a background that was just what we wanted. Uh, did some out painting on it. Took I cut out the the title, li the Little Mermaid, uh, pasted it on the picture, and then used uh, what is it? Uh, um, yeah, uh, in painting. So I, I went to in painting, masked out that that square that I put in with the title, and then used Control Net uh, with um, uh, I think it was canny. I'm not sure if I used canny. I don't think so. I think I used uh, uh, scribble. Anyway, so it gets the outline <clears throat> of the uh, the title, and I was able to re-render that. So it looked like this really cool, very square, very perfectly square stone block with the title, the Little Mermaid, in in it, it carved into the stone. You know, I'm like that stone just looks too too perfect, right? You know, so. I, I take it into um, uh, in painting, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, just in painted the edges of that stone, changed the prompt uh, to say broken, destroyed, uh, worn down stone underwater kind of thing, and uh, re rendered that without controlling or anything else, just doing in paint only. And man, it broke that stone up and and gave it this very worn look. I, I'd show you, but I, my wife made me promise not to show my daughter in any of these videos. Um, <clears throat> in fact, let me see if I can at least show you the, the bottom part of it. Hold on. Let me see if I can get that set up. Okay, so here's here's what I got worked out. So this is the outfit they she put her in. And, and uh, uh, re ran her and gave it a very nice scaled look and, and illustrated look. And, and getting that scene... Uh, using the mask that I generated was great. And then the rock, which was perfectly square, I broke it up around the edges. The whole thing turned out great. I mean, yes, there's some things that could be fixed on it a little bit better. Uh, but overall, like, the AI just interpreted it beautifully. And uh, the whole thing turned out great. She loved it. So, um, definitely, gosh. So, let's walk through this. Uh, showing you how to get these uh, extensions installed. Okay, one of them requires installing from a URL. It's not part of the uh, extensions repository yet, um, which is the uh, latent couple, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's go check that and see. And then uh, let's see. Let's head over to extensions here. I want to show you the the. Uh, Where the link is here. Let me grab that. Okay, so the first one we're looking at is the Stable Diffusion Web UI Two Shot uh, extension. Okay, <clears throat> the the link is right here. I'm going to put it down in the description so you can just click on it and go to it. Okay, uh, but when you get there, 
uh, it's they call it the latent couple extension two shot diffusion port okay and you're just gonna come up here you're gonna copy the, uh, the get URL okay uh, then you're going to go into uh, command prompt in the uh, extensions folder of your web UI. Uh, so let me pull that up. So one of the easiest ways to uh, get there is using a file browser. You browse to the, uh, the folder itself you know, under Stable Diffusion Web UI Extensions folder. And then at the top, you just type in CMD. And that should drop you into a command prompt. Okay right in that folder. <coughs> now in this folder all you're going to be doing is copying and pasting uh, the git command that will install this and let me, let me grab that for you here. Now I'm not going to actually run it, I've already done it, uh, I don't need it, uh, but I'm going to throw it in there and uh, show you what, what it needs to be here. Let's grab that. And again, this will be linked in the description, or it'll be in the description itself. Okay, so in here you're just going to paste that. So get clone dash b feature mask selection HTTP, and then the URL. It'll go through and install that. Okay, now uh, there was another uh, Git that was supposed to be applied. That's supposed to be some kind of a uh, fix for something, a patch. But it looks like they've fixed that because. Uh, I tried running it, it aired out, but it's been running fine for me ever since. So I don't think we need to worry about that. Once this is done installing, okay, um, you'll want to uh, refresh your interface. Uh, just reload the whole thing, refresh the page. Uh, you can reload the interface if you want. That's that's totally fine. Okay. Um, check to make sure everything's updated uh, while you're in here. Um, this does use a lot of the latest stuff to be able to do what it's doing. And um, now the next thing we need to get installed is the composable LoRa. Okay, so this one is available in the extensions repository. Okay, um, again, I've already got it installed, but you're going to be looking for. Uh, we'll scroll down here. So it is. This one right here, the Stable Diffusion Web UI Composable LoRa. So you're going to be looking for that in the extensions. You just click on it, in, or click on the install, let it install, okay? Um, refresh the interface again, and you should end up with uh, these two uh, tabs down here, Composable LoRa and Latent Couple, okay? Once you get that installed, uh, then you can start playing. So, I mean, really it's just going to be setting up, you know, the, your model and everything else like you normally would. Pick the size. Uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna start walking through the process of this. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get things set up the way I want it. We're just gonna drop that down there. Uh, we're gonna go to a 16 by 9. <clears throat> so I like to set to 1200. I know it's a little wide, but then I can adjust it if I need to. So we're gonna lock that in at 16 by 9. Okay, and then uh, we can bring this down. To whatever I, I need to, so 992 is usually a good one. <clears throat> doesn't doesn't uh, cause too many distortions. I, I know we do run into that, but a lot of these newer models, uh, the uh, the how do you pronounce this RPG Artist Tool, uh, the newer version they have, the version three is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it handles hands really well. Most of the images I do, uh, the hands are turning out great. Um, in fact, uh, this is what I, some of you may have seen the, uh, <laughs> the my ode to Dragon Ball Z. Um, some of the images I'm pulling from that are just amazing. I'm trying to do a picture for <laughs> my brother-in-law. He asked me, or, well, it's for Father's Day, and he loves Dragon Ball Z, so we're trying to do an image based on that that uh, gives that that really cool effect. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can show you the. Yeah, I mean, just these these images are, are amazing. Uh, with the prompt that I put into it, that that state in my prompt generator helped me get, uh, just absolutely phenomenal. So I'm trying to adapt that to where I can put somebody's face on it, and I'm getting there uh, using the same technique I, I did the demo on for doing illustrations and keeping the faces in it. So uh, very cool, very cool uh, uh, checkpoint. So so let's get down here. So the way this works is you come down to the composable LoRa and the only thing you need to do here is just turn it on. OK, 
Okay, that's it. Um, basically, what that's telling the interface is that it's going to uh, use the the formatted prompt that it's going to generate based on um, what we do down here under the uh, latent couple to segment or, or render each area of the prompt like in the uh, regional prompter, uh, but this will be uh, a lot more customizable. Okay, So now we come down to latent couple. We're going to enable that. And now you can drop an image in here. We're just going to use a blank canvas. Okay, We're going to set it up the kind of the same format here uh, as, as what I have up on the width and height up here. So 992 by 560. Now, I'm pretty sure the uh, maximum on these is gonna be 1024 by 1024, which is fine. You could probably go into the uh, JSON configuration file and modify that, which I typically do. Like I go in there, my card can handle higher resolutions, but for this purpose, I, you know, because we're working with uh, generating new images, I don't necessarily need to go to the higher resolutions because it does cause distortions. Uh, AI has a hard time with it. So we're gonna stick with this. So we're gonna create a blank canvas. <clears throat> now, one thing to keep a note here, as some of you uh, start messing with this, um, in fact, I think I'm having the issue right now. Let's see here. Yeah, so <clears throat> let's, I need to check something because one of the things that this has a problem with is if you're, um, you have your resolution set, but if you set the uh, scale factor, I think it is, let's pull this up here. Um, so I have my resolution set, uh, but if you have the scale set anything other than 100, it has a hard time. Now, it's having a hard time right now. I'm not sure why. Let me, uh, let me check a few things here. Oops. I wonder if that's because I changed the resolution on this. Let's set this back to 512. We're doing a little experimenting here. <clears throat> it is having a hard time with this. Let's see if we can't get this to work a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so the problem looks like not only do you have to have the um, possibly the uh, you know your your scale on here set to 100%. Um, the scale on your web browser needs to be at 100% as well. So I like to have it a little larger, um, just so I can see things a little quicker. But you know this works just fine. So uh, let's reset that back up. See if it works at the resolution that I want. It was 992 by 560. Yep. Okay, so we're going to generate the canvas, make sure it works. Okay. All right. So, it has a hard time erasing that, so we're going to regenerate. So now we can actually go through and set up what we want as our scene. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do, you have to kind of think ahead a little bit on this. Like, what kind of a scene do you want? Because what you're going to be doing is the, the prompt will be based off the number of masks that you set up. So in this particular instance, maybe I want a, uh, a bedroom scene. You know, just like a, we're going to say a teenager's bedroom scene. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with our first color. And we're going to pick our areas, okay? Um, let's go ahead, we're going to start with this color. We're going to change the size so we can have a little bit of, uh, not having to scribble so much. Um, let's say over here, like yeah, like right here, I want you know, kind of where the bed is, um, maybe a little bit of the floor or whatever, okay? And then, now you can leave white space or whatever. Um, I kind of like the idea of overlapping stuff. So we're gonna, we're gonna pick another color. This one will be for, Oh, uh, I don't know, let's say we have a uh, computer desk and um, maybe a 
poster on the wall or something, you know. We'll just say computer and poster. And then the next color, let's just pick a random color. I mean, it really is able to differentiate between any color. You can put as pretty much as many as you want in this. This is what's so awesome about this. It's going to set it up automatically for us. <clears throat> so then over here, we're going to do, uh, we'll do the bedroom door right here. Okay. Don't worry if you leave white space. It, that, that doesn't really matter. So um, last, you know, when I was testing this out, I was just doing three, maybe four uh, masks. We're going to try with a couple, at least one more than that. Uh, so over here, I don't know, let's say we got, um, bring this out. I don't know, we'll put um, in this one here, we're gonna put uh, like maybe some shelves, a dresser. Yeah, a dresser would be good, okay. And then, last but not least here, we're gonna go down to the floor here. And just, this is just a general layout, so we're gonna, we're gonna do that. So now we've got the mask set. We come down here and I'm finished with the sketch, okay. It's going to go through, and what it's going to do, it's going to figure out, okay, where each of those masks are, the color associated with it, and now we can start adding the prompts. So what I want to do, <clears throat> now I haven't quite set this up. Um, maybe I should. We can give this a good try here. Let me uh, pull up my prompt generator under stable or under the uh, GPT-4 because... Um, uh, I've tried doing this under the uh, GPT 3.5, and it has a hard time figuring out the multi-prompt, uh, you know, my specific instructions. So we're going to give this a try here. <clears throat> so we're going to come over here to, I think, the 4, and then we're going to go to here. this um, give me let's see we created how many scenes did we create or areas we got one two three four five areas plus the general prompt okay <coughs> so that means we need a total of six prompts these prompts over here are going to be very short um, just describing real basically what's in that field of view in that mask okay but we have a general prompt. We want something that just says, hey, this is what the scene is, okay? Um, so we're gonna want, uh, again, six prompts. So um, let me say one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six prompts. The first is a normal prompt. The next five are short simple one sentence descriptions follow follow the list below okay so we can come down here one um we're gonna do this as a, a, just a digital illustration. So a detailed um, digital illustration of a typical teenager's bedroom with a bed, computer desk, wall posters, <coughs> uh, dresser and a messy floor okay number two so this is where you need to figure out which prompt is which okay so now we're gonna go down in order here so first mask <clears throat> is this one here I think this is where we said there was gonna be a dresser so we're gonna come over here uh, let's actually figure out what the next couple are so we're not flipping back and forth so we got that one and that one. so we got dresser um bedroom door and floor so number two is um, bedroom dresser <coughs> with uh, 
with. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's what's on a teenager teenager dresser uh, with um, junk on top. <laughs> And then, okay, so here's where we need to put in, um, in fact, we're going to come up here, and this is where you're going to learn a little bit of prompting. So um, you want to be very specific with the AI. Uh, each uh, short prompt should always end with as a digital illustration okay so basically what I'm saying is uh, oops, um, telling the AI as you generate these prompts always include this at the end it'll help make it a little easier uh, so we're gonna do that number three is the door so a partially open bedroom door <clears throat> periods on those. Number four uh, was the floor, so a messy bedroom floor. And number five, let's go back. Uh, we got five and six now. So we got the floor. Now we're going to do the computer desk with a wall poster. Uh, we're not going to specify what's in the poster, okay? And then we got the bed. So let's come back over here. Um, a computer desk and wall poster. And then number six is a messy uh, bed. I think that's it. That's all I'm going to put on that one. Um, <clears throat> we can mess with the prompts afterwards. Let's just see if the AI is able to generate this. See if it takes my instructions. We're using the 4.0 model. It does do a better job typically of uh, interpreting the logic behind your request. The 3.5 has a harder time. It'll generate all the prompts, but it typically generates full prompts for each one, so which doesn't really help us. Now being the I think we can work with this. And as you can see, it is putting as a digital illustration at the end of it. They're, they're a little more detailed than I expected, but not bad. Um, and this one, this prompt does include the negative prompt. We're not going to worry about that. So we're going to come up here. And what we're going to do is take each, uh, each one of these um, into our uh, the, the Composable Laura. Uh, let's see. Let's grab this. Come over here. We're going to put this in the general. Okay. And we're going to start grabbing each one of these and throwing them into their respective prompts. So let's make sure this is the right one. So this one is the an overflowing bedroom dresser. Yep. Okay. Good. So it is. It did do it in order. So we're going to grab that. Just gradually move these over. I think it's going to do a good job. It did. I love how the four O model does interpret it. Um, and. Uh, it didn't include this best quality masterpiece detail. I've been told I don't need this. I love having this there. I feel it does have an effect on things <clears throat> through a lot of experimentation. Uh, and I love how it took the, my suggestion to keep these simple, So, but it, I wanted some detail in them, so it's doing that on each one of those. Okay. Um, let's see, did I do that one? This is a messy bedroom floor. Okay, got that one. Grab this one. So my prompt generator definitely helps out with this. And you can mess with the 3.5 model if you don't want to pay for the GPT-4. Um, <clears throat> see if you can get it to do the same thing. A lot of times with the 3.5, it's just a matter of making sure you give it the proper instructions. Okay. Um, now that we've got those in there uh, and we've got the mask set up and everything, so all we need to do is click Prompt Info Update. Okay. It goes through and it generates this prompt here. Okay. And it should automatically insert it up here, formatting it the way it needs to with the and 
for each prompt that is included with the, and this is where the composable LoRa comes in. That's This is what it looks for. When you enable that, it's looking for this formatting, okay? Now let's go ahead and give it a negative prompt. I'm just using my prime negative on this one. <clears throat> for those of you who would like to see it, I'm not hiding anything here. It's just that right there. Um, I used ChatGPT to refine. Yes, it does have a lot of different emphasis on stuff. People say that's too much, whatever. Ah, the results I get speak for themselves. I like it. So um, all you naysayers out there, I do things my way. Let's go ahead and generate that. And yes, we're going to bring this up a little bit. <clears throat> Interesting. It's not exactly what I had envisioned in my head, but it 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 is. Uh, it, it's what we specified. So let's bring. Once this gets done, let's bring it up here. So you have the bed over here. You have the mattress. You have the computer desk. Okay. Um, and we did. It did put some wall posters up there. We got kind of a messy floor. So very interesting. Now here's the thing. Now you can go through and kind of customize this. Um, I mean, that's a beautiful scene. Like, I love that. It's It's got a lot of detail. I'm not sure why I put a TV there. <laughs> Even a, it's an old CRT TV, too. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, it looks like we got a computer screen, possibly a laptop over here. And uh, I love this. It looks like some sort of a googly eye thing up here. So very cool. You know, this is, and you could take, here's the thing. Now that we got this laid out, um, if you watch my previous video on using InPaint anything, you could take this over there and InPaint to your heart's desire on this, changing it up, okay? Let's go ahead and generate four different copies of this. We're going to, uh, I'm going to change this over to a realistic uh, uh, model. So we're going to use the uh, Dreamlike Photo Reel. <clears throat> this is a great one too. I want to see... Uh, and for time's sake, we're just going to do two on this. Give it a second. Okay, let's go ahead and hit render on. Let's see what it does with this because this is a digital illustration. Now with the real, the photo real one, it may ignore the digital illustration. It may not, um, but because it's been trained on realistic stuff, uh, it may kind of mess things up a little bit. Let's see how it does. Yeah, it's not doing a very good job with this. Yeah, we're gonna drop that. Let's try uh, the one I, I love using. I love using Illuminati Diffusion. Um, a lot of you have asked about this one. They do have a version of it available on Civit AI. It's not the original one, but it's been trained on the exact same weights. Now, originally, I didn't think that it worked the same way, um, but that was because I didn't download the associated YAML file that goes with it. Once I downloaded that, this thing acts and renders exactly the same as the original Illuminati Diffusion. So yeah, go ahead and download it. Just grab the YAML file for it. So let's see what this one does. <clears throat> a lot of this is playing around with different models, you know, until you get what you want. See which one works best with each, uh, you know, with what you're trying to render out. Yeah, this one, again, you know, it's trying to do it. It's uh, definitely not what you would think. It's having a hard time interpreting that. So it looks like, honestly, the best model to be using with this is going to be the uh, um, RPG Artist tool. Uh, I love this one. It seems to work really well. Let's go ahead and render out a couple more with that one. <clears throat> you know, another problem here. Okay, you know what? I think part of the problem is that uh, I have a VAE. Now, this VAE is uh, used with the um, RPG Artist tool, okay? Let's, just, just for uh, experiment's sake, let's switch back over to Luminati Diffusion. We're going to set this back to automatic. And try it one more time because uh, that does have an effect on the image, okay? It will change things. Eh, eh. Nope, still not doing it. Okay. So let's switch back over to these. 
our BRS tool. We're gonna to switch this back over to the VAE that goes with it. You know, it's interesting. You, you, you might wanna look up the VAE stuff. <clears throat> I don't understand it completely. It's it's like little, it's like, a, it is a checkpoint model. It's a smaller model and it's got like a refinement model. Um, and when I was using the RPG Artist tool, I noticed that my images were very, uh, almost washed out. The colors didn't pop. And um, I finally went back to Civit AI and looked in their, their description, and they did specify to use this very specific VAE. And as soon as I started using it, um, suddenly the colors popped, everything just looked better. And so just keep that in mind when you're working with your models. Read the instructions, like if you download a model from Civit AI, uh, double check the um, what they're saying in the description because uh, those little things like that YAML file or you you know picking a VAE to work with it makes a huge difference in how how it works. Uh, there we go. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> yeah, this model definitely works better with uh, the uh, um, latent couple and composable Laura. So. Awesome, okay, so I like that image right there. That's really cool. We're gonna try something now. We're gonna grab the seed from this. Okay, because I wanna see if I can keep this, at least the layout of it, okay, because it feels pretty modern. Um, it's got a couch slash bed, I don't know, futon or whatever you wanna call it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and select a different color. And we're gonna see if we can add somebody into this. So now that we've added another mask, we're going to redo this, okay? And it does change how this is laid out. So it kept this one here, but then it added this one in the middle. Unfortunately, you do need to go through and move all of your associated prompts down one. We'll just go through and do that real quick. Doesn't take much time. <clears throat> I apologize for me clearing my throat. It's morning here. Um, I've been. I feel like I've been sick the last couple of days. Okay, so now we're gonna put in a different prompt here. We're gonna say uh, <laughs> uh, a punk goth uh, teenage girl. Uh, as a digital illustration. Just see what it does with that. Okay, we're gonna do prompt info update, throws it up here, and we got the seed in there. Let's just see if it keeps, you know, that. We're gonna restore faces just in case. Let's see what it does here. <clears throat> This has been really fun to experiment with. I really appreciate people, you know, the the attention that I've gotten on my channel. Um, and it's been just fun showing this stuff and learning this stuff, because I'm learning as I go too, uh, about all these different extensions and, and uh, the techniques. I'm, I'm gradually getting to a point where uh, I may actually start setting this up as a, a, a uh, service for people like doing what I did yesterday for my wife gave me an idea like are, do, do people would people like this you know customize images with like their kids faces or whatever <clears throat> and so um, obviously that one didn't quite <laughs> work out uh, she yeah I'm not sure what's going on there that's interesting that's fun that one's not bad okay um, we could probably modify the prompt a little bit. It didn't, it's interesting to put the bed over there. So uh, it, we're, we're probably giving it a, quite a bit of information here. Um, I'm wondering, let's see, are there any weights? Uh, alpha blend. So let's see, I'm curious about this. What does this do? Alpha blend changes something. Obviously, the blending probably between uh, each of the different masks. It's with yeah, 
let's change the alpha blend down down low. I wanted to see what that does. So we're going to hit that, come back up here. Let's re-render it. <clears throat> Just see if it changes anything. We still get the same like large person coming out of the floor or the slightly larger than normal uh, person. I'm probably thinking we're going to get something very similar, but... Again, this is this is what's fun about uh, Stable Diffusion. It's just the the amount of customiz customability, customization, customization that you have uh, to play with this. So, so yeah, got the same thing there. This one, yeah, it looks like it's going to be about the same thing. So we're going to stop that. We're going to get rid of the seed um, and let it just do what it does. Okay, that one turned, was looking like it was turning out a little bit better. But the seed does kind of lock it in, and so it tries to work within those bounds. But if you get rid of the seed, it does have a little bit more freedom to work uh, with the whole image, the image as a whole. Let's see what we get here. <clears throat> So it looks like this bottom image, we're getting kind of a similar thing. Um, this one, much better. So we got the bed over here, we got the dresser. Didn't interpret the door, which is fine, but we got the computer um, in front of a window. So it's, it's taking quite a bit of artistic freedom with the image. And I do remember, I think we're gonna try one more thing because I think the config scale does have an effect on this, but that's actually a great image right there. Look at that. That's not bad. Okay, so I was told that p part of this could be just changing the config level down, um, which does kind of, how would you put it, rein the AI in. <clears throat> so got these renderings. Now, I really think the, the issue that's going on here is, um, you know, we're getting a great image. Uh, obviously, she's... Too big. I think that just deals with the mask size. So I would adjust the mask size, bring it down a little bit. Um, but we're getting just great detail. Holy cow, look at the detail in this. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this would be something you'd upscale and just have a, 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 an awesome time e e you know, uh, eking out the detail on like each of the posters and the things that are on the side. This could be just one of those images that you just get lost in with all the detail. Yes, you can basically just adjust the mass size, shrink it down a little bit. The AI seems to understand that and interpret it. And it's just trying to fill that in uh, as best it can. So there you go. Uh, very, very cool um, uh, ability to create these highly customizable images uh, through Light and Couple. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments. Join our Discord. Um, we'll get the Etsy store back up and going. So for those of you who are still interested in getting uh, the prompt generator, this worked out really well uh, on the 4.0 4 model. Um, I mean, we could try the same thing on the 3.5 just to see what it does here. Let's just copy this. Let's go over to the 3.5. Uh, let's see, I think this is it. Let's see. No, here we go. <clears throat> So this is 3.5, and this is actually, um, I think this is based off my original GPT uh, prompt generator. Uh, no, I'm going to use the new one. Okay, let's paste this in here. And just see what it does. You know, I think this is the four. This is still the four model. Hold on. Yeah, it's still the four model. Hold on. Let's switch over to this one here. And you always go back up to where you originally started, where it says, tell me what you want to see. Because the further down you get the, with this, if you're um, asking it to generate and generate and generate, you know, different prompts, it gradually loses, it, like it forgets uh, the instructions that you gave it. So let's paste this in here. That's much faster. Okay, so it looks like what it did, um, yeah, it gave titles. Yeah, it did not interpret that at all. I'd have to reformat the instructions I give it and be a lot more detailed. So definitely the 4.0 model is definitely better at interpreting 
um, your instructions when it comes to the prompt. So again, we'll get the Etsy store up and going. I apologize for that. Uh, we'll get that out there for you. So I appreciate everybody taking time to listen to this. I know that it was a bit of a lengthy one, um, <clears throat> but this was uh, uh, one of the funner ones I've done. This uh, uh, this extension is going to be really fun to mess with. Uh, I This is why I like the regional prompter, but the regional prompter was much more complex to work with, a lot more difficult, and uh, it has the masking ability kind of like this but I couldn't figure out how to use it right away. And honestly, this was much funner. So um, like and subscribe our channel. Stay tuned. We're going to be coming out with a lot of cool stuff. And uh, love this community. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you later.